to support us. Well, joining us now from our Tel Aviv studio to discuss the upcoming vote, as well as other de developments, is former Deputy Foreign Minister and Ambassador to Washington, Danny Ayalon. Welcome, Good. Danny. Thank you. Good evening. First of all, Ambassador, what do you make of this anti-Israel resolution? Does it have any teeth? Well, it, it does, unfortunately, and the language is very harsh, um, but it's, it's, there is nothing new. Uh, the Arab League, the Palestinians have uh, long tr tried to embarrass Israel, actually to uh, try and export all the anti-Israeli resolutions from the uh, General Assembly of the United Nations, which is uh, toothless, to the Security Council. In the Security Council, Fortunately, we always had the United States to veto it, and the United States has a uh, long tradition policy not to allow the UN to come in between Israel and its neighbors because it has always been counterproductive. The United Nations did not support peace with Jordan or peace with, uh, uh, with Egypt uh, in 1979. We have to understand that the United Nations today is a rubber stamp for the Palestinians, and uh, they have no credibility, no morality, and uh, the United States also from its own well, interests. You, you mentioned the, Egypt. What about the fact that this was proposed by Egypt, which is diplomatically considered an ally of Israel? Absolutely. And uh, Egypt, and not just Egypt, uh, throughout the Arab world, always there are two facets. Uh, one, of course, the strategic ties with Israel, which is in the uh, uh, utmost importance from national um, um, security for uh, whether it's uh, Jordan, whether Egypt, some uh, uh, Gulf countries, but at the same time, uh, parallelly uh, or simultaneously, uh, they continue to attack Israel uh, diplomatically, politically. Always they give the excuse that this is uh, the uh, desire of the Arab street. Uh, this is where the Palestinians foment um, uh, a lot of um, uh, inconvenience to, uh, to all the Arab regimes. Ambassador, you spoke about how the United States has traditionally been protecting Israel in the UN. Well, will it cooperate with the Prime Minister's appeal for them to veto this now? Well, I hope so, because again, a, a, uh, a resolution, a one-sided resolution at the United Nations siding with the Palestinians against Israel uh, has no purpose at all except to discomfit Israel, because it will not further peace, quite the contrary. It will lock the Palestinians into a more intransigent position. They will have no incentive or no reason from their, uh, from, uh, their point of view to uh, negotiate with us directly without preconditions or to make concessions. We have to understand that peace, uh, it's not just Israel who needs to make the concessions. And the Arab and the Palestinians' policy has always been to internationalize the conflict, not to do anything themselves, but uh, uh, bring in or bring on Israel the entire international uh, uh, community. The United States understands that and has understood that, and always it vetoed it. Also, the U.S. had the long tradition policy uh, to be uh, the main player here in the Middle East, not allowing the UN to replace the US. I hope this will continue because, again, for the sake of peace, the sake of stability, and also I understand for American interest, they should veto this resolution this uh, evening as well. Well, the Prime Minister has been concerned that President Barack Obama might take a parting shot before he leaves office, and, and maybe this is going to be it. Maybe tonight's vote will likely validate the Prime Minister's fears. Well, I hope it's not the case because, again, there is no, um, I would say there is no uh, room here for acrimony or, um, or personal relationship to really sway or to impact a, re a resolution or a decision or a policy a decision of the utmost national uh, importance, certainly to Israel, also to the United States, and as I said, throughout uh, the Middle East. Also, I believe, as there is an outgoing administration now, I don't think that the outgoing administration should tie the hands of the incoming administration, uh, certainly not with such a major uh, policy deviation uh, from the past. Well, the Prime Minister seems to be more optimistic about this incoming Trump administration. Any idea how he's going to handle the Middle East? Well, it seems like he is going to actually um, top the uh, or change totally uh, the American foreign policy, not just vis-a-vis -vis the Middle East, but also vis-a-vis -vis China or Russia or even Europe or, or, or NATO. And it seems like uh, from Trump's position, uh, nothing uh, is uh, set or nothing is etched in stone. He's going to check everything uh, from the bottom up, and uh, he will not hesitate 
to change uh, long uh, traditions, especially when it comes to Jerusalem, especially when it comes to uh, the Israeli communities in Judea and Samaria. So this may be a, um, a, a breath of uh, fresh air when it comes to uh, Jerusalem. Ambassador Danny Ayalon, thanks so much for joining.